This is the concept of a futuristic taxi pod. One of my client Victor asked me to design it and present it on my YouTube channel. I have designed it like a futuristic taxi. It's quite big with a wingspan of 900 mm. Since I have designed multiple quadcopters in the past, so I thought it will be an easy task to design it. But I was wrong. It is one of my difficult and time consuming projects that almost took more than a month to complete. It took multiple crashes before attaining a successful test flight. I have used 12 inch propellers since I was constrained to use only two propellers and only a 12 inch prop can give me enough thrust to lift this taxi. Along with it, I have used two 5010 brushless motor. Now first let's start with its CAD model. This is the first look of it. Since the design is big, so I'll be using a 10 by 10 mm carbon fiber tube to hold both the rotors. The top part will hold the flight controller and accessories. The bottom part will house the battery as it will lower the center of gravity. I have 3D printed all the parts with 0.2 mm layerite and 30% infill. I have used 0.8 mm wall thickness to reduce the overall weight. Now let's start the assembly. I'll start by assembling the base of the bicopter. I'll be using M2.5 screws of 10 mm length. Attach the side mount using M2.5 screws of 10mm length. Then attach the vertical arms using M3 screws. The motor is attached to its mount using M3 flips screws of 12mm length. Make sure to attach the screws inverted. I'll be using the 6802ZZ bearings. The prop guards are giant C section which are printed on a 300 by 300mm printer. Both pieces are attached using M2 screws. Additional parts are attached and connected with the motor mount. The idler mount is connected using M2 screws. I'll be using a 180 degree MG995 servo motor. It is housed in its mount using M2.5 screws. This is a 10 by 10 mm carbon fiber pultruded tube of 1000 mm length. Place it between the center of battery mount and tighten it. Place the support in the motor mount and attach it with the carbon fiber tube. It's a little bit tricky process. Then attach the lever arm with the motor mount. Now let's assemble the canopy. Attach the seats using screws. The headlight mounts are printed using transparent PLA. Attach the side mount using screws. Then attach the front and back canopy together. The bicopter is assembled. I have mounted all the electronics and it will be protected by the top cover. I'll be using a Pixoc flight controller. Let's attach the battery and test it. So it crashed for the first time, second time and heavily crashed the third time. The landing gear and prop guards are broken along with the propellers. The cause of the crash was these loose mounts by which the bicopter couldn't balance it. So I have redesigned the mechanism which will directly connect the servo with the motor thus eliminating the lever arm. Now let's again test it. Although the bicopter was somewhat stable but there were some changes required in the PID settings. And from here on we continue to change the PID settings till the stability is achieved but the copter keeps on crashing. There might be a possibility of turbulence caused by open windows, so we closed them with tape and then tested it. But still there were wobbling moments. So the last attempt was made to increase the distance between the motor. And finally this time it worked. Although the video was shot in night, but you can still see the stability of the bicopter. Now let's assemble the prop guards on the new arm and do the PID settings. After fine tuning the settings and with a couple of crashes, we finally got the stable flight.
The wind is pushing it, but it is trying to stabilize itself. So as you have seen, it took approx 10 crashes to fine tune the PID settings for a stable flight. To be honest, there were more crashes which we have not filmed. There are many reasons of the crash. First is the longer body. As the bicopter moves forward, the body oscillates and the frequency keeps on increasing till it gets crashed. Second is the wider front section which increases the air resistance thus destabilizing the bicopter. But we have achieved the stable flight at the last by fine tuning the PID settings. The stability could have also been increased if we have used high precision digital servo. But since I was not having them, so I have used the analog one. The download files can be found in the description. I have included another bicopter in my coming projects. So guys, if you have liked this video and found it informative, then please like, share and subscribe to my Mac Ninja YouTube channel. So thank you guys for watching it. I'll catch you later with the next project.